if your phone is always in your pocket there's a very high chance you might struggle with low sperm counts this clinical embryologist has a lot of things to say today about low sperm counts in men and how some of you can avoid it this is the luck you do experience ideally you're supposed to have eight hours of sleep every day you already had a stressful day you're mentally stressed physically stressed you come back home and you're heading to the gym to lift heavy things even the machine needs rest then talk less more of our body when we talk to people and you advise them be like oh but my friend takes alcohol and he has 10 children remember your body is different from your friend's body when it comes to fertility it's focused on the women because we women are seen as the physical carriers of pregnancy so when there's a delay in pregnancy everybody moves their attention to the, to the women. women do you understand nobody pays attention to the man You said you are a clinical embryologist. What are those things that causes low sperm counts in men? Okay, one of the most common lifestyle factors that causes that affects male inf- that causes male infertility has to be putting our gadgets, putting your phones in your pocket and also putting laptops on your lap. This the gadgets, your gadgets can actually cause DNA fragmentation to your sperm and this can actually cause low sperm counts in men. Also, the heat from the from your phone. You sometimes you notice your phone gets hot. Do you understand? Same thing with your laptop. Keeping them on your laptop can actually increase increase the temperature in your testes and actually affect the process of spermatogenesis, which wow. is a process where your sperm is being produced. Wow! So heat damages sperm. I never knew this honestly. And my phones are always in my pocket. Apart from phones and laptop, are there other electronic devices? Um, included as well okay mostly because yeah, most the most electronic de- devices that we keep close to our body is our phones and the laptop then your ipads and all so it's best to avoid any what about like khaki your Those khaki of things no your khaki so would you wouldn't, wouldn't, okay, wouldn't, wouldn't okay. so what are other things too, that causes low sperm counts in men this okay. is very important so you need to take this very very seriously okay so when we're talking about other factors another very common factor has to be stress everybody goes through stress but when it becomes a chronic stress this can actually cause the release of the stress hormone called cortisol and this also affects your fertility both both in the men and in the women so chronic stress in the sense that oh you go to work spend your whole day at work you come back sometimes from work you're heading to the gym go to the gym you're lifting heavy heavy medals all, all heavy gymming equipment all in the name of trying to lose weight and all of that you get back home you're stressed, probably have things to finish up. At the end of the day, you're sleeping, you're living, you're surviving on just two hours of sleep. This is chronic stress. Over time, the cortisol hormone can be released and this will also affect your fertility. Wow. To be honest, a lot of people are on this table. So what do you advise for people who have to do with, you know, deal with stress? Okay, so dealing with stress, go to work, try to get enough stress. I know we are all hustling, the country is sad, but stress is very important. Ideally, you're supposed to have eight hours of sleep every day. But so many people just survive on two to three hours of sleep. Over time, this can cause a lot of health issues. Aside your fertility, so many health issues can actually be developed from chronic stress. So we need to try to get enough stress. You're back from work, try to get enough stress. Try to, you're back from work, try to get enough rest before the next day. What about people who go to the gym like a lot? To them, they think stress is, you know, giving um, power to the muscle. But on this other side of the conversation, yeah. you are saying that stress could be affecting your um, fertility. male fertility. Yes. So what's your advice to people who take gym very seriously? Okay, I feel going to gym is very important because also you don't want to be overweight because if you're overweight, it can also affect your fertility. But then do everything moderately. You've already had a stressful day at work. It's okay to go to the gym three times in a week. Do you understand? Or just over the weekend. The days you're not going to work, the days you don't have busy activities throughout the day, you can actually keep those days for going to the gym. But you already had a stressful day. You're mentally stressed, physically stressed. You come back home and you're heading to the gym to lift heavy things. This would only affect your body. Your body needs rest. Our bodies are not, even the machine needs rest. Then talk less more of our body. Our body needs rest. So no matter how much you want to keep it, rest is very, very important in everything we do. Mm. So what else causes... Um, 
in male infertility. Another thing, aside lifestyle, aside genetic factors, for some people that were born with genetic factors that actually causes that actually born with factors that can make them have um, low sperm count, like the varicose so where by you have veins in the scrotum that are enlarged. This also affects your fertility. But for male, for men with this issue, they were born with it. Do you understand? So for their own, they have to either go through surgery or other or other means, go through IVF and other things to be able to have children. But let's say lifestyle factors, a very common lifestyle factor that a lot of men are guilty of is alcohol, consumption of alcohol. Now we have shisha. So many people are into vape. So many things that we do. We don't even know what the ingredients of these things that we're consuming. We don't know what they are. But for the fun, for flexing and all, everybody just consumes them. All of this, science have shown, studies have shown that all of these contains ingredients that can actually affect your sperm as a man. Hmm. Wow. A lot of people who take alcohol would disagree with you. Yes, a lot of people. It's would very difficult for them to stay away from it. Yes, it's very difficult to stay. And then one, a lot. Of, most time when you when we talk to people and you advise them, be like, oh, but my friend takes alcohol and he has ten children. Remember, ev- your body is different from your friend's body. Your friend's fertility level um, rate is different from your friend's body. Do you understand? So you could have underlying fertility issue right from childhood which you don't even you know. know you won't even know do you understand so all of these lifestyle factors can still affect your fertility as a man so just because your friends are doing it doesn't mean you should it's very very important to be aware of your health status is it possible for people to know what their fertility status is that is where the problem is it's more it's more scary for the men because most men don't even know they have issues with their fertility until they get married and they are finding it difficult to conceive. Unlike the women, where if you have hormonal issues or something, it, your body shows you signs. Sometimes you might miss your period. Sometimes your period will be irregular. All of this gives you a sign, and then you go to the hospital to see the gynecologist. But unlike the men, the only way you will know your fertility as a man is through a semen analysis test. And how many men actually do a semen analysis test until... no Most men, no man will even consider doing a semen analysis test until... There's actually a, a reason for them to do it. Do you understand? Mm. So now we're seeing more young men in their 20s, in their early 30s, who are not yet even married, but have issues with their sperm. Do you understand? So the only way you can know your fertility is through a semen analysis test. And how many people actually go, like how many men do you think would just walk to the clinic to randomly request for a semen analysis test? A semen analysis test is very important, but how many people actually walk randomly and just say, oh, I want to do a semen analysis test to even know the fate of my sperm. This is interesting. Can you tell us more about yourself and your work? Okay, so my name is Yusuf Zbaida Muhammad. I am a clinical embryologist. I am the scientist behind the scenes in the fertility world. So basically, what we do is to help people that have infertility issue be able to have children through IVF and other means of assisted reproductive technology. This is really interesting. So, what is something about men's health that people don't know? Uh, you made some. You made a statement that a lot of people don't really um, know their health status when it comes to fertility, fertility. until they are married. Very yes. So, what are some things that men don't know? I mean, in ladies, um, they kind of have certain um, symptoms mm-hmm. that they see. But for men, what are those things that you think they should be on the lookout for? And if they see these signs, they should report to the hospital. I think um, the most common has to be erectile dysfunction for a lot of men. And then low libido, you are feeling fatigue. All of these are symptoms that you should be worried about, especially when it has to do with erectile dysfunction and low libido. So these are early concerns that should make you want to you know, check your fertility to check if everything is fine. Another common issue with men is hormonal imbalance. When we talk about hormonal imbalance, the, most people just assume it's only women that actually battle hormonal imbalance. Your hormones, the um, FSH and LH, are two very important hormones that are responsible for your fertility. So same thing for the men. If there's an imbalance of these two hormones, it can also affect your fertility. But most men don't even know they have hormonal imbalance until they get married and are struggling to have children after a while that's when like oh let me go and check only to find out that all this while you there were no there were no sperm cells and if there are no sperm cells how is your wife supposed to get pregnant 
So because of this, it's part of the reasons why the stigma when it comes to fertility is focused on the women because we women are seen as the physical carriers of pregnancy. So when there's a delay in pregnancy, everybody moves their attention to the, to the women. women. Do you understand? Nobody pays attention to the man. And male infertility is on the rise. As of then, it used to be the women, but now it's a 50-50 thing. The women, 50. The men, 50. The mm. men, 50. So there's a rising rate of male infertility globally. Wow. Wow. This is really, really interesting. Hope you guys are learning something new from this. Please, if you have a question, kindly indicate in the comment section. We'll be more than happy to make a video um, talking about that particular um, topic mm. and satisfy mm. your curiosity. So we are going to do a different video to talk about ladies okay. this thing called picos pcos now, P pcos yes hormonal imbalance. imbalance sometimes you see a, a lady growing hair on her chin you know so sometimes you see ladies losing front hair i don't know if these are those symptoms mm -hmm. but there are many more mm, yeah. and um, different ladies experience different yeah. symptoms but somehow they do not really understand in details why this happened do you think you'll be in the best position to talk about this we can make a different episode yes that's fine we can talk about because pcos is one of the leading cause of infertility in the world mm. pcos is a hormonal issue and it affects the fertility of a woman but it's a problem that can be solved right it's a problem that can be managed because everyone's um, pcos level is different so it can be managed but it cannot be totally cured i want to use that word totally cured it can be managed and then you'll be able to have a normal you'll be able to have children and be able to do other things hmm. so it can be managed but it cannot be totally cured okay interesting wow this is really interesting hope you guys found this really valuable do you have something else you'd like to say okay so um or should we just keep this episode short let's keep this episode short we can add more things probably in subsequent um episodes all right thank you guys for watching this episode of the lock you do experience the audio version is going to be uploaded on spotify so go to spotify right now search the lock you do experience and you'll be able to listen to the audio version once it's out and thank you very much for granting this episode thank we'll you. be having another episode shortly talking about pcos i wonder if there are other things you can also talk about that i may not know about pcos about fertility uh, it could be about fertility it could be about anything the idea is to just share something valuable Evil. to the public that people don't really know or people may have heard but they don't really understand or people know but you know enough details have not been provided okay well. i think um it has to be about our fertility our reproductive health i think everybody just talk about oh i want to get married and have children someday what are you how are you preparing your body for the future you want to be able to have children but yet you don't pay attention to your fertility your fertility plays a major role in your life as a man as a mm -hmm. woman so we need to pay more attention i need to create more awareness on reproductive health issues mm -hmm. so your fertility is very important it's okay to walk into the clinic and request to do a semen analysis test it's okay to walk into the clinic and request for a hormonal profile test just to be sure that your hormones and all the hormones that are responsible for your fertility are all in check so that even if there's a problem as they always say early medication is the best so that you can start early treatment and get everything in check even before you get married we all do before people get married they're like oh let's go for like um screening to check if there's any disease or anything but a lot a lot of time people skip out the fertility part because they feel like oh okay people just assume oh when i get when i get married i'll be able to have children and it's not like that it's the reality now fertility the rate of infertility is increasing globally and so we all have to be worried and pay more attention to our reproductive health <laughs> thank you very much so we'll make another episode talking about before you get married you have to be you know you have to think about your repro yeah, reproductive health reproductive health and that will be a different topic entirely so thank you guys for watching and see you in the next episode and bye